Hey guys, what's up? I'm here at Titan Medical Center, getting my blood work done, getting checked up on, see how I'm doing. Guys, we're out here right now. Uh, we're on the penthouse deck down St. Pete Beach in my room. And at this point, we got some of the tight nets down here shooting some awesome, awesome pictures and content for you guys. You guys are going to love this. And these three girls, obviously, all different types of backgrounds, ethnicities. I mean, they're really, really awesome, all as individuals, right? Um, so we have Eric over here, tight net. Um, she's been with the team for a whole year now. Her and Destiny were actually in the same tight net class that came in. And it's just really cool because we were talking on the beach today and we're like, man, it's already been a year. It's already been a year. And uh, we've done so many cool events. And like when you come a part of the Titan family, and that's what it is because you feel like family when you're a part of us. And um, at that point, it's, a, it's an awesome feeling. Like, you know, we work together, we have fun together and, and we get the job done. All right and we look good doing it and feel good doing it and that's really what it's all about right so it's really cool to see these girls and they're shining and then we have sarah in the middle right so sarah's a new tight net with tight medical center and she's been representing really really good so i'm really really proud of her too as well and hopefully you know she's gonna make it past the year mark because that's usually the probation induction period if you make it a year you've done some serious events with us done some shows and all the cool content it's really cool to see these girls. They're rocking it. They look awesome with all these different Titan outfits. I want to show the different Titan outfits. I think that uh, you know, like some people, they tight cast, you know, some of the different things. You can only see tank tops and t-shirts. But we have some really, really cool outfits for females too as well. Now, the romper that Erica has, that's an exclusive for just tight nets. Usually we wear these at like some of the promotional events and stuff like that. Now, every different promotional event, the outfit could change. It literally could be a gym event where it's like leggings or maybe the romper or we're doing like a cocktail reception where it's like dressed to the nines and we have custom like you know gear for that too as well but it's just really cool and it's really athletic so it's, it's awesome plus the tight blue and white that's our core colors it's really really cool so erica does a great job filling this thing out and looking good doing it good job erica and of course we've got sarah over here so we've got these awesome athletic shorts for girls um these are a killer if, if you turn around real quick so we have the team titan on back and then you see the team titan on the baby doll tee these baby doll tees are awesome and the baby doll tee you can wear literally everywhere you can wear it in the gym you can wear it to the beach you can throw some jeans on or some shorts and wear it out i mean it's really really you know diverse and what you can do with it and that's what it's all about too because like i said titan is a lifestyle a living lifestyle it's a healthy lifestyle and you know what we gotta not just feel good on the outside but as we're feeling good we gotta look good on the outside so that's where the titan brand comes into play as far as the clothing line and making you guys look your best as well as our therapies make you feel your best so guys you guys do an awesome job you look fantastic big shout out to you guys that's it guys Hello guys, I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Today, we have a special guest for you guys. We have one of our medical providers, Chenille. 
Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor to be here with you today. So what exactly is your background and what do you do for Titan Medical Center? So I'm an advanced practice registered nurse. I've been in the medical field as a nurse for 10 years, and I have been an advanced practice registered nurse for the past four years. So what that means is I started out as a nurse. I went back to graduate school, um, which then gave me the background that I needed to be able to diagnose, treat, and care for patients at an upper level um, scale. So I do work very closely with doctors and other medical providers to provide adequate care to patients. And at Titan Medical, we center our focus around balancing hormones, um, optimizing overall health, wellness goals, and really just getting to the root of some of those problems that patients have. In addition to that, we have a vitamin and amino acid therapies, medical weight loss, detox and rejuvenation, mm -hmm. and a whole plethora of different um, therapies to help patients achieve their goals. Wow, that sounds awesome. So we've, we've pretty much helped every patient achieve their goal, what they're really looking for. And I think that's the big thing, right? Now, can you tell us a little bit about how hormone imbalances can affect people mentally, physically, just on the day-to-day -day basis for them? Hormones are a very important part of the body. They relate to and send messages to many different organs in the body that tell those organs how to respond in different ways and when to respond and what actions to promote within the body. So if one of those hormones is not signaling properly or isn't being sent properly by one of those endocrine glands, mm -hmm. it's going to disrupt a lot of different functions in the body, which will then be determined based on the organ that is being affected by that. So say it's your estrogen levels, your testosterone levels, whatever the case may be, that can cause different fluctuations, which can then cause different symptoms such as low libido, energy levels, poor sleep quality, decreased mental focus and concentration. It can also cause water retention, difficulty in weight loss, uh, all kinds of different things, and that's just to name a few. So it's really important to keep those levels balanced um, to really just optimize your health. And not only that, keep some of those other hormones balanced as well. Sounds super important for somebody to really check after and look for. So Chanel, how can bringing back some of these hormones or optimizing some of these hormones really help patients, males and females? It's a great question. So when you are rebalancing these hormones, it can certainly help alleviate a lot of these symptoms that the patients are experiencing, which can of course improve energy levels, their libido, sometimes even their relationships, because that can be causing quite a disruption in that aspect of their life. You know, we have had several patients that do come back to us and say, you saved my marriage because, you know, my wife wasn't happy. I wasn't happy, whatever the case may be, which is unfortunate, especially when it was something that was out of their control in that aspect. So by balancing hormones, you're not only improving just overall symptoms that the patient's experiencing, but sometimes the most important things in their day-to-day -day life as well. It's really important to make sure you're looking at the whole picture and not just the labs or you know whatever the case may be. It sounds like this is really gonna help somebody in their day-to-day -day life. Um, some of these things that they might not even know that they'd be, be experiencing, like these symptoms and stuff like that, and just chalk it up to maybe I didn't sleep enough last night, maybe I'm not eating correctly, or something else is going wrong, or I'm just like this, you know, they really don't know what it is. Can you tell us a little bit about why lab testing is so important, and then maybe a few tests that, you know, hormones and things like that that should be ran that maybe PCPs and regular doctors don't usually run at their regular checkups? Looking at the whole picture of hormones is very important and that's not something that you want to guess on because as we kind of said earlier, depending on what type of organ system is involved can merit many different symptoms that are associated um, with that organ structure. And sometimes the symptoms can be very similar between the two. So if you're not adequately checking and looking to see what needs to be replaced or balanced, you can be correcting the wrong thing, um, which is often, as an example, what you see when people try and correct their own testosterone levels or estrogen levels. And really it was an estrogen that was too low or too high and they just pound on more testosterone or whatever the case may be. Um, and then they end up doing more harm than good. And in that regard, even then shutting down the body's natural ability to produce that hormone hormone and you ended up in a worse case than you were to begin with. Wow. I mean, so it's really a really balancing act of what you're doing and making sure that you're monitoring these things. And like Sharice said, some regular doctors, like some guys go in, they usually get a checkup. They say, you know, you're healthy as a horse, 
right? You know, my doctors always say that. And, you know, what does that mean? You know, is it my cholesterol as healthy as a horse? My liver, my kidneys are good. Um, but I, when I asked my general practitioner, this was 10 years ago, my general doctor, right? My primary care doctor, you know, about testosterone and stuff like that. He said, well, why do you want to check that? You know, well, I'm having some of these symptoms and well, you don't need that right now. Or they might just not know about it. So that's really cool that we're checking and you're really looking at some of these different tests that a lot of general practitioners or primary care doctors are not looking at. So that's really, really cool. Um, you know, so when a patient does come in, how much time do you usually spend with them? And why do you usually spend that time with them? So I am one of those providers that absolutely thinks it's just extremely important to spend as much time with the patient as the patient needs. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the benefits of working with Titan Medical is, you know, we're not trying to just flip patients. We're actually taking the time, spending the time, um, to make sure we're answering all the questions, explaining exactly what the protocols are, why we are giving certain medications, so that there is no guessing about it. I want the patient to know that you know, they're in good hands. We really genuinely care about their overall well-being and how they're doing on their regimens and making sure that everything's balanced appropriately, um, which is why follow-up is also extremely important and follow-through and just being available to the patient in between the next follow-up appointment via phone call, email, whatever the case may be, so that they have confidence in us taking care of them and themselves in doing their regimen. Typically, I'll spend anywhere depending on the type of appointment it is of course uh, for new patients usually anywhere between 20 to 45 minutes sometimes i've even gone up to an hour if the patient has a lot of questions that need to be answered uh, because i do want to make sure that they're confident and they they are feeling good about the regimen and what's being prescribed to them for follow-up appointments generally it's a little bit less because i'd like to think i answered all the questions yeah. up front um, and sometimes that can be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes or so Wow, so it's really important for the patient to know what's going on. I think that, you know, Chenille has went over the blood testing, what the patient's really gonna, you know, perceive when they come in as far as treatment wise, they're gonna know what the benefits are, the possible negative side effects, if there is any, and just overall what we're gonna do to benefit them. Um, so it's really, really cool. And a lot of times I know that you know, regular doctors or even primary care physicians or whoever it might be, even your specialists nowadays, I know that they don't really have the time to spend with the patients. So I know that you know that you think that's very, very important as well. Absolutely. And so do we. So if you're wanting to become a patient with Titan Medical Center and you need the special care, I think that we're here to help people. So we want people to call or text 727-389-3220 to be able to get the professional experience for our medical providers and our care. Uh, you're not only a patient with Titan Medical Center, but family. You know, we think Absolutely. about it as family. So we want you to become part of the Titan Medical Center family and uh, that's it. And then maybe you'll get to meet Chenille as well and have the positive experience of working with her and letting her answer all your questions. So thank you, Chenille, for coming on. Thank you so we much. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Guys, today I want to talk to you about something that a lot of people don't want to bring up or talk about. Maybe you think it's taboo, maybe you have an ego, or maybe you might be embarrassed about. That's about the libido, your libido. Males and females out there, they all suffer from possible low libido, and this can cause damaging things in your relationship. If you're not feeling your sexual best, then you're probably not giving that to your partner either, right? And your partner's probably wondering, what's wrong with me? What else can I do? So, don't you want to give your partner the ultimate best experience you possibly can? Don't you want to have the best possible experience in the bedroom you can as well? This is where partners can talk about things, but they can also both increase their libido. That's right. With Tight Medical Center Therapies, we can help both males and females out by increasing libido. Now with guys, they might be suffering from erectile dysfunction. And obviously females are not going to suffer from that, right? but they still suffer from the symptoms of low libido and maybe not wanting to have the sexual relationship. And this is an issue because not only is your physical health important, your mental health important, but your sexual health is just important, especially for a healthy relationship. You want to be able to show your love, not just emotionally, but physically as well. And this is one way that us as human beings and all animals on this planet do. So this is the main point of the conversation. If you guys are suffering or not confident about your sexual health and giving your partner the best or don't think that 
things are going as they should, that's where you guys need to call our Text Titan Medical Center. We can help you out and navigate you guys with some of the best therapies. And we don't judge. We are here to help patients, right? So don't be embarrassed if you have some of these issues going on. It's normal and a lot of people really do. They just don't talk about it and they really should because everybody out there should want to feel their best, look their best, and obviously perform their best, not only outside the bedroom, but definitely inside the bedroom. So guys, or girls, if you're suffering from low libido or just not feeling like you used to in the bedroom, that's when you need to contact us. Call or text us today, 727-389-3220. It's a very simple and easy process and everything comes very discreetly to you to your doorstep. So don't delay guys, improve yourself, not only outside the bedroom, but inside, not only for you, but for your partner too. What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharif. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week, we come at you guys, giving you guys great tips, tricks, or some just some good advice to help you guys' relationship go to the next level, reignite some of those different flames, or just make things better, because we just want to be better, right? Everybody should want to be better, especially in their current relationship or their future relationship, because the past really doesn't count. All you want to do is, is learn from your past. Yeah, learn. So you don't make those same mistakes in the future, right? <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, but, you know, this week, you know, I think it's important, you know, to t cover this particular topic, which is making sure you don't make your partner feel insignificant and making sure that they feel appreciated and, uh, you know, the same way that you treated them in the beginning, okay? And I, I think you know, a lot of the, the time people become complacent. And they don't follow through with what they used to do. And, you know, the, the partner might feel that in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about it in the past. Like, you know, Sharice, like, she used to, like, and she still does. She writes me, like, little notes, and she'll, like, leave them places, okay? <laughs> um, you know, so random. <laughs> it's just certain things like that, right? The little, little details of little, little things like text messages and stuff like that. To still get and I love, yeah, you know, and I try to send them back and stuff like that. You know, obviously, she's you know a little bit more romantic when, than me, but I, I try to be you know in my own light too, as well. You know, he's romantic in his own way, yeah. You know, you just, I want to make sure that you know she feels appreciated, um, you know, that I'm there for, her, and at that point, like, you know, I you know, I see everything else is, that's going on, and then I still love her just as much or more, definitely more than in the beginning. You know, and uh, I hear from a lot of people out there and, you know, they say, you know, I'm having this problem, you know, in my relationship where, you know, it started like this and it might have been like, you know, little notes or, you know, just certain things that their partner would mm -hmm. say to them. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, like now it's not happening, you know, it just it has the love weared off, you know, which changed comfortability, comfortability complacency, like, yeah. you know, these are all different things that happen to a lot of relationships out there. Um, because I think that, you know, every day, obviously, the more you're with somebody, you, know, you should love them more and you're learning more about them. So it should bring you guys closer. But, you know, it kind of wears off to a certain extent, I, I think, with some of these couples out there. And, you know, they were like that goo goo gaga in the honeymoon stage and then after that after so much time it, it kind of wears off like you know this is it's not a new thing like this not, you know, it becomes like, routine yeah it's like a routine it right? is it's just like you know get up brush your teeth take a shower go to work come yeah. home eat dinner go to sleep yeah. get up brush your teeth yeah. take a shower go to work <laughs> <laughs> literally it's that, that's just over and over and over except instead of like me telling you those those particular things yeah. you're doing it in your relationship right you just don't realize you're doing it right you know and you know at you know it, it, like during a relationship like usually couples like 
they find their boundaries of you know what they do and what they do for each other or you know chores or things around the house or things like that and they mm -hmm. kind of get in, into that routine too and like all right this is what we do and like it's not even talked about at that point like just certain things right just do it um but you know at that point like if you're not recognizing your partner like thank you i appreciate it you know what you're doing and saying these different things they kind of feel like they're getting taken for granted you know or some things are, they don't appreciate what you're doing for them um, mm -hmm. Just the way you feel all the way around. Even a little thank you does go like a long way. Yeah. You know, I like using examples, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, this is a recent example. I don't know if you saw my Facebook story yet. I ain't seen the Facebook oh. story. Yet. So, anyways, I, I woke up this morning, right? And I'm, you know, I told you guys, I wake up, go get the first thing I do, probably within the first three minutes of me waking up. I took a picture too, so I'll share it with you guys one day. But maybe I'll put it on here. I'll give it to Art. Oh, no. I'll give it to you guys. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i show it to you guys what I look like. Now, don't judge me. But um, I'm in bed, you know, like trying to get all the emails out. I have a jug of water next to me and that's it. So anyways, um, this morning, you know, he came in and he gave me a, a ham and cheese croissant. Like, he made me a ham and cheese croissant. And so I had put it on my Facebook, and you'll see it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it does say, like, you know, I was like, why is this ham and cheese croissant the best croissant I've ever had? And then at the bottom it says, because my husband made it for me. Because mm. he brought it to me, and he brought it to me in bed, and it was all, like, crispy, and it was just so yummy. But it tastes extra yummy because he made it for me. Like, I didn't ask him to make it for me. He just made me one because he thought I might be hungry and he knows I like ham and cheese croissants. So, you know, we're going on a little binge with these croissants right now. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> me and John do binges. But, you know, he knew I wanted, like, one of them. And I just, you know, I put it on my story and he would have eventually saw it. Now I blew, blew the surprise. But, you know, it's just me saying thank you. You know, like, I really appreciated that. I thought that was so sweet, you know. Yeah. And him doing it was sweet. You know, so it's just little things like that makes the whole world a difference. It does. It really does. It does. It totally made my day. And he, like I said, it don't take a lot of money or anything like that. Yeah. You can make him something to eat, write him a note, and that takes no money whatsoever. That just takes a little bit of effort on your part, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, you're going to surprise them. I mean, it could make them smile. It can make their day for the day. You know, it might make them appreciate you even more, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you want to do these different things. You know, I think that the problem is, is that people, they just get so into these routines and, uh, you know, you can't say over time because, I mean, listen, we've been together for 13 years. We're, we're together every day, all day, you know, pretty much. <laughs> Literally. Uh, and we're, you know, most couples, they're working jobs. Even right. in, during COVID, you know, like I know a lot of people were at home together and that caused a lot of problems. People mm. weren't used to it. And, you know, I, they were getting into those nerves and stuff like that instead of embracing it to a certain extent and, and really growing your relationship, you know. And, but mm. some people need that time apart too, yeah. like during their work hours or whatever it is. And that makes them appreciate their partner even more when they do see him. Mm -hmm. I can understand that that side of it too as well. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's me personally, though. <laughs> She's gonna have separation anxiety. Watch out, guys. <laughs> I'll be blowing in a bag. <laughs> Where's John? He just went out to the car to go grab something. Sure, he's gonna be right back. <laughs> You know, so I mean, that's another thing. You know, if you really want to, you know, do something really cool, like, you know, send your significant other a little present in the mail, right? And mm -hmm. watch her unbox it or give it to her, whatever yeah, it is. Cute. That's cool. And like, totally unexpected. So it's not like a Mother's Day or Where it's Valentine's expected, Day. You're yeah, it's something. kind of like an expected thing. No, this is like you just doing it on like a one off, like, right? And you could give them like one flower and a little note if you're a guy. You know, you could do a lot of these different things, you know? I mean, women can do it a million different ways too so at that point you guys just got to find like little things you could possibly do to you know to appreciate your partner show the appreciation show them they're not insignificant right and you know if you used to do these things in your relationship and you're like man like i don't do those anymore you should probably start just you know i'm not saying go full blast but maybe adding that back into the relationship might bring the relationship you know to a better point because mm -hmm. some relationships get to that little plateau area and then they start dying off or people start going apart or they don't feel the same way about each other and stuff like that there's reasons why mm -hmm. um and, and the reason is is because you know people do like they're not they're not spending the time together if you used to spend a lot of time together mm -hmm. and then you go to spending no time together that's almost like a shock to the relationship yeah right um and it, let's say you start a relationship one way and for example, 
you guys both spent a lot of time together. You guys never went on girls' guys' trips or anything mm-hmm. like that, right? And now all of a sudden, it turns into, I'm going on a guy's trip every other weekend. I need to go out with my buddies. There'd be uh, fuss and fights you know, about then that. At that point, the girls are feeling like, hey, listen, what, <laughs> what, what's what, going on? Yeah, why? All that's, of a sudden. That's not how it used to be, yeah. right? Now, when you start a relationship and you're both like, hey, listen, you know, I, I do these certain things. You guys establish boundaries right. and expectations. Right, it's being set, right. It's being set. And then at that point, like, you know, you work in. You know, me and Sharice are the example for that. Like, when we first started, it was like, she was like, hey, listen, don't bother me. Like, don't text me all the time. Don't, don't be hounding yeah. me. And I'm like, hey, listen, don't be doing that to me either. We're good, right? <laughs> me and you are good. It was so right? weird. Like, this pound so weird. Pound it. <laughs> but, so weird. You know, but then it gets to the aspect of, like, you know, you really do want to spend more and more of your time with that person or learn about We ended up person. hanging out a lot, and I was like, oh, I really like this guy. Yeah. And then, you know, the fact that he didn't want to know where I was at, now I'm like, ugh. Oh. You don't want to know where I'm at now? Well, you didn't ask. You want me to not ask you where you're going? I'm like, well, you don't care? Yeah. So, you know, it was one of those weird. It was weird. You, you can't force <laughs> anything either, right? Weird. Don't try to force anything in a relationship. You try to force somebody, it usually negates them not wanting to do it even more. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got to want to do it. It's almost like, you know, like... Uh, a drug addict and saying you need to stop drugs. Well, you need to stop. You're gonna stop right now. They gotta want to stop drugs, right? right? To do something like that, and you know, that's just something you gotta do. Like you gotta, you gotta give me opportunity. Maybe communicate the way that you want the relationship to go or things that you're missing out on. And at that point, you guys come to some resolution. Communication. About communication. Again, communication. If you don't communicate, people are not psychics. Well, Absolutely. I mean, I guess there's some people out there that are psychics, supposedly. Absolutely. But um, most people, they don't hold tarot cards in their pocket. Nope. They don't know what you're thinking half nope. the time. You know? And if you just keep playing it off like everything's cool, yep. then they're going to think everything's cool. You don't have to be mean about it. But, you know, it does make you... you got Just take a second to think about how you can make your partner feel special one day. Right. You could, it could just be anything. It right. could be like, uh, it could be a compliment. It could be anything, you know, it, it just think about it for two seconds. And if you do communicate with your partner, set out those, those bonds re- resolutions, and at that point, come to an agreement on it. Yeah. Now, if they don't follow through with it, then, you know, you have to, you have to go up and say, hey, listen, why aren't you doing this? And if they don't get a good answer, you guys, might have to come to terms with other things. So that's another thing. You guys got to come to to an agreement and follow through with the terms of that agreement. Okay? (laughs) So that's just, it's just, you know, some some things I see out there. But that is the topic. Make sure you make your partner feel like they're number one all the time. And you know, make them a ham and cheese croissant. In the bed. It's like, it's just... It it's real simple. Melts it's real heart. easy, okay? It, it made my day. Everybody <laughs> likes to get fed. That's what it is. I'm always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so take that advice. I hope you guys are having a great day out there. We'll see you guys next Sunday and every Sunday on ABC. And if you guys miss it, just check out YouTube. Go to Type Medical Center. You can see all the shows there. Plus our social media, Facebook, Instagram. Look up Type Medical Center. You'll find us there. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you guys next week on another Cupid's Corner.